right, so here we go, picking up our lesson where we left off. Um, let's switch over to the calculator. Ooh, 3D. All right. See, no one would call it. I would not be surprised if you use, like, the first three minutes of class just to set up that one. Yeah, you could. It's almost like I planned it. Um, what was the, was it two, was it two cosine x as our function? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Minus, oh, don't forget the going down one. All right. Uh, someone said, suggested that zoom trig uh, might be the right scale on which to see this uh, these graphs and their intersection. Looks great. Um, second, uh, second calc, five for intersection. First curve, yes. Second curve. Why does it even ask me when there's only two curves there? Because you could have five curves. But I could. But if I only have two curves. Because there are two ways to have that kind of curve. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, and then I'm going to shimmy over here just a little bit until it guesses the the one on the positive side. So there we have it. Our intersection is uh, 1.26. Blah blah blah. And when I leave the graphing screen, I note that x still has that value. Now what I'd like to do at this point is to remark that if I say in my write-up that A has the value 1.26542-3706, then I never have to write that number down again in the process of working out the problem. All right? So there's another trick that I want to... With, because I want, to want you to maintain all the decimal places accuracy that you can, I doesn't mean I want you to write that number again and again and again, which would be silly. All right, so let's go ahead and let's say, well, what is then the area of the uh, region between those two curves? From negative A to A. Why? Because we recognize that those curves are symmetric. They're both even. They have symmetry across the, uh, the y-axis. From negative A to A, top curve, bottom curve, and watch your negative signs here, by the way. Make sure that when you're talking about the, the G function, that the G function, the entire thing is being um, subtracted. Sorry, I almost said negativized. <laughs> and then a dx to close it all off. May I remind you one more time that the writing of this integral is not just an exercise of following procedure, but it's really important that you imagine the sum of numerous thin rectangles which are dx wide and f minus g tall. Now that I've reminded you that, let's go ahead and finish this off. I'm going to do one more trick. Nothing up my sleeves. Uh, no, nope, nothing. <laughs> Full wrinkle line. Yeah. All right. I'm going to rewrite this integral and make my life just a little bit easier. I might as well distribute the negative sign to it while I'm at it. Wait, why did you take the two out and write it? That's a new two. Why do you have to read it? Just discuss. Catching that? Yeah. Because the answer, the solution is going to do this all the time. And I want you to not be like thrown by it. We recognize that these curves are both symmetric about the y axis. That this location A and this location negative A, there's a symmetry about them. Another way of thinking of that symmetry is that this, uh, let's do it in green, this green 
area between the curves and this red area between the curves. Why would you use the red marker for the area that already has that in it? Why did <laughs> Why are you reading my mind? Because it's exactly what was going through my head when I was doing that with the green marker. And I was I really tempted to say something. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but those the red area and the green area are the same are the same size. So instead of doing the awkward from negative a, because when you have the negative a, only bad things can happen. You screw up the negative sign. Jaime Escalante used to call them secret agents. They just screw everything up. They get in there and they just make a mess. Jaime Escalante? Yes. OK, thank you. What is called Bulos? Is it Stan in the back? Guanos. Guanos. Stan in the back. Guanos. Stan in the back. Stan in the back. Yeah, the, the movie of his life was called Stan in the Liver. You have the guns. Guns. Guts. Fortitude. It's Aya. It's Aya. It's Aya. It wasn't the movie of Geometry. All right. So, so Mariah, who had the, a confused look on her face when I, we first did this, now that we see that this green is the same size as the red, does it make sense to only go from here to here and just double it? Can you do this every time? No, only when there is symmetry about the Y. Got Good? All right. So let's finish this off. Two times antiderivative of Two cosine x, two sine, minus one third x cubed plus x as evaluated from zero to a. And that's equal to two times two sine of a minus one third a squared or a cubed plus a so there's my upper bound evaluated at a and I'm just going to do a quick note here the sine of zero yeah. is zero one third x cubed of when one third zero cubed zero zero, zero. Right, so this becomes a big whopping zero, minus zero over there. Now, what's left is what's the value of that? Calculator, ready? Two times the quantity, two sine of x, because wasn't that where I left the value of the intersection? Minus x cubed divided by three. Oops, I hate when I do that. Delete, delete, down, divide by 3, plus x. Close the parentheses, enter, and there's our solution. And this is the spot, of course, where we may round to three decimal places. Uh, this one would be like unit squared. Yeah, they didn't give us a they didn't give us a particular linear unit, so we can. Are we okay with that problem? Well done. Should we go on to the next thing? Um, go on to the next thing. Find the area of re the region R in the first quadrant that is bounded by y equal to square root of x and below by the x x axis and the line x equal or y equal x minus two. I think we need a picture. as it is worth approximately 2 to the 10th number of words. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Uh, in blue, then, will be our probably misnamed sideways parabola. In red is our x-axis. And in green is an approximation of the line y, y equal x minus 2. Imagine that line is actually straight. So in the first quadrant, above, bounded above by that parabola and below by this line and this line. So we're talking about this really oddly shaped region right there. It's bounded, above. it's bounded above by the parabola and bounded below by the x-axis. So the x-axis provides a low boundary. Okay? How is this problem different than the problems that we've done earlier? It's got the x-axis. Okay? May I draw... A, uh, a rectangle? Could you stop me if you try? Here's one rectangle. And what's the upper curve? And what's the lower curve? Uh, the upper curve is like the square root of x minus the x But then I go over here and I draw, draw another typical rectangle. <laughs> Edmund, please discuss. So what are we to do? So to find the area from 0 to 2. OK, I'm going to assume that you're going to say that right here is 2. So to find the area from 0 to 2, you have to use y equals square root x as the above equation. And OK, yeah, you want to you think about this. this this region being actually broken into two subregions. Here? Well, that's not part of our region. Here? No, because because it's bounded below by the x-axis. The lower boundary on this little portion is right here. We're not going down. We're not going down into here. All right. So. I think, Trevor, you got it exactly right. We think of the region as being broken down into two regions because it splits between what curves we define as our above and our below curves. So what could we say is the expression that represents the area of this big region R? Well, Trevor, you said from 0 to 2, where the upper curve is root x. And the lower curve is it's y equals 0. Now, you'll notice we typically don't even write the minus 0 part. Really, this region 1 is just like the problems we used to do, where it's just the area under the curve from the curve down to the axis. And if we disregard the minus 0, we get an expression that looks just like the old, pro old kind of problems. Yes. That is exactly correct. So from 2 to that intersection. I'm going to guess, and we're going to just do a quick guess and check. I think it's going to be at 4. Just, just throwing it out there. If I throw 4 into here, y is equal to 2. And if I throw 4 into here, y is equal to 2. Indeed, I think this place, this location here is the, inter, is the coordinate for 2. So I think the second interval is going to go from 2 to 4. And since you've already stated it, why don't you help me write it out, Candace? All right, so 1, 2, x minus um, 5, x. Good, and you remember the quantity, too. Perfect. Could not have, could not have said it better.
Shall we finish this one off? Yes. All right. So creating a series of equal signs in which every expression is equal to the expression before, because that's our good, our good style. The antiderivative of x to the 1 half is 2 thirds x to the 3 halves. We've done that problem so often that it's coming faster. And we're going to evaluate this from 0 to 2. And then over here, we're going to have, again, three, 2 thirds x to the 3 halves. Oh, let's distribute these negative signs through before they screw us up. Minus 1 half x squared plus 2x as evaluated from Starting again back on this end, two thirds times two to the three halves minus zero to the three halves. Plus, this one I guess I'll do a slightly differently, two thirds four to the 3 halves minus 1 half 4 squared plus 2 times 4. So there's my upper bound evaluation. And then let's do it on the lower bound as well. Minus 2 thirds, 2, two to the 3 halves minus 1 half 2 squared plus 2 times 2. Closes that one, and that closes that one. Okay, I think I got enough parentheses to last, last a lifetime. Yeah, Nicole. Okay, I'm going to show you it later. Can you say, um, and then you can just say, um, three, that's my zero, zero, zero. Now, when we, when we were here, mm -hmm. why did we say it, or why did we get rid of it? Why is it positive? Okay. Because if we were following this general idea of areas between the curves are this f minus g dx, well, in region 1, our f curve was the parabola, which we was the square root. But our g curve is the y-axis, or the x-axis, which is the line y equals 0. Well, this is a mess. So um, what I'm, I'm going to say, this, if I distribute this through, I have 2 to the 5 halves over 3. I may have made a mistake. Well, 2 to the 1st times 2 to the 3 halves, because they're the same base, so you add their exponents. So 1 plus 3 halves is 5 halves, all right? So that takes care of that big piece. Plus, all of these things stay the same sign. You know, if you don't mind, I'm going to distribute this negative sign before it screws me up again. Negative, positive, negative. Not quite as not much of a negative as I'd like. All right. So going on to this part. Um, what's 2 times four, 4 to the 6? Over 6. Over 6. Because you do multiply that by 2 or 2 to make it 4 over 6, so they have the same base. So you pull a different power times 4 to But we're multiplying. Why would we care if they... Oh, the same... Oh, so, you, oh so you're going to want to change this to a 2 and then change that to a 6. Now I should change the other one to a 4. <laughs> I wish I had a, a I wish control Z. I wish change to a 4, 6. They're both 4s. Okay, let me change that back to 4 thirds. Okay, no. 
Oh, you want to, okay, I see what he wants. He wants, I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. He wants to change this two to a four to the one half. Is that right? Two is the same as four to the one half. So four to the one half plus four to the three halves. You know what? Sorry, you know what? this is silly. This is silly. Just ignore what I'm I'm going to go, let me rewrite this. This is 4 to the 3 halves. Are you ready? 4 to the 3 halves. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 cubed is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. This piece is 16 thirds. Done. This part, 4 squared. Is that a minus? Yes. Yeah. Minus. Okay, 4 squared is 16. 16 divided by 2 is? 8. So that's a minus 8. Moving on. Plus 8. All right, moving on. Plus. Same thing. Uh, no, it's not the same thing, is it? Square root 2. <laughs> so this is, this is 2 to the first times 2 to the 3 halves. This is going to be a negative 2 to the 5 halves over 3. All right. Continuing on. Plus 2. I agree. Moving on. Minus, minus 4. All right. So we got a, we got sixteen thirds minus two, common denominator of three. That's so it's sixteen thirds minus six thirds, which gives us ten thirds. Um, when I distributed the negative sign through, that became. Oh yeah, yeah. So this this kind of goes to that. All right. Ten thirds. Golly, I hope that's the right answer. I think it is. All right. You get the gist. So guess what? More formulas. More formulas. But formulas that make our lives easier. Are you ready? Now, we have been doing these regions thinking about upper curves and lower curves. And the width of our typical rectangles were measured as slices of x, so we called them dx's. But there's no reason why that if the curves lend themselves that we can't make our typical rectangles run this way, in which case this distance would be described as a slice of y. And this distance here would be described as a right curve subtracted by a left curve. The bigger x values subtracted by the smaller x values. You might, you might, as I, let me erase that drawing that I did. You might try to imagine what would it be like if I was trying to make long vertical rectangles here. Oh, I go from curve to curve here, but from here I go from here to here, but then here I'm going. Do you see how many different variations on there? How many different regions we'd have to slice it up to if we wanted to do those kinds of rectangles? It's, it's not easy. But... I wonder if I'm ever going to learn if I just tap, it'll go away. Slowly. <laughs> yeah. But in this in this orientation, those rectangles go from curve to curve consistently throughout the entire region. It makes the problems easier to do. All right. Now. What else is different besides using the differential dy to describe one dimension of these rectangles? The other thing that's different 
is that instead of being something in the form y is a function of x, these curves are in the form x is a function of y. Yeah. Are you ready for an example of this in practice? Should we have this fun equation? Yep. But you'll see it doesn't look much different than the other one we had. It's f of y minus g of y. Let's convert to f of x minus g of x. dy instead of dx. And you know, we use a and b as our descriptors of the beginning and the end in the x direction. We use c and d to represent our beginning and end of, the, of our limits in the y direction. So d is always higher than c? Yeah. d is higher than c, and f is always to the right of g in this, in this particular version. All right. Here we go with a, an example. How about we have this function, y is equal to the square root of x, which looks kind of like this. And we have this function, the line uh, starts here at negative 2 and goes kind of this way. And we want the area that's bounded below by the x-axis and by this line and then above by that parabola. That's just the one that we just did, didn't we? Okay, but now let's revisit this again with rectangles that go that way. If you remember, by the way, this point here was 4, 2. Now, as this rectangle slides up and down, does it ever have a situation where it jumps different curves, or is this always the top curve, and is this always the bottom curve? Oh, that's good, right? We don't have to do multiple integrals now. Excellent. Second thing to notice, this curve was described as y is equal to the square root of x. But again, in this new version, we want something in the form x equals. How about y squared? True? True. In the old y, we had y is equal to x minus 2. But if we're going to do this new one where it has thickness dy, we want something x is a function of y. If I bring that 2 over there, I get y plus 2. So I go over here and I say, okay, I would like an integral expression that represents the area of that region. How about the integral from my lowest y value to my highest y value, 2, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to list the curve that's furthest to the right, that has the highest x value first, and I'm going to subtract it by, I wrote that wrong, yes. let me try that again, uh, y plus 2 minus the curve that's furthest to the left. Y squared. And let's see if we have an easier time with this integral than we had with the other one. Let's see. Antiderivative of y is 1 half y squared plus 2y minus 1 third y cubed evaluated from 0 to 2. So I get 1 half 2 squared plus 2 times 2 minus 1 third times 2 cubed, minus, so there's my upper bound evaluation, minus my lower bound evaluation, which looks something like 0 plus 0 minus 0. As the French would say, très bien. And let's clean this up. Uh, 2 squared is 4 over 2, that's 2. 2 times 2 is 4 and minus 8 thirds, or 6 minus 8 thirds. Let's see, 6 
uh, in the thirds is going to be 18 thirds. 18 thirds minus 10, or minus 8 thirds is equal to 10 thirds. Now, which way would you prefer? That one. That one. Definitely the integral is a lot, a lot easier. All right, so here's the deal. Um, there isn't much more that I didn't do. There's one more sort of geom geometric trick that's embedded in the, uh, in the write-up for this section. You can look at it. Perhaps it'll save you some time uh, as well. But there's the assignment to work on over the break. But that's all you need to do for me over the break. I'm going light on you. I am. And I hope all of you are going to get to do something fun over the break. Like texting your friends. That would be a great thing to do over the break. <laughs>